So next up, I have um, a great pleasure of introducing, he shouldn't be here now because we're doing it all alphabetically, but I was actually quite nervous about meeting him because he was one of the first poets that I read his work and actually enjoyed. And um, I was a bit worried earlier that it would feel faint when I met him, but uh, I got through it. But I was so nervous I must have missed his name off the list in the running order. But it's a real pleasure to introduce uh, John Glenday. The truth is, um, John just spent the last half hour trying to persuade me not to read. But I've come a long way, so I'm going to read this poem. I'm actually going to read two poems. Um, one slightly dark one, with crane flies in it, like John's, and then something a bit cheerier. Um, almost a year ago, I was asked to write a poem to go with a Dutch short film that was called The Walkers. And um, it was a kind of vague film. It had people moving across a landscape with nothing else very much happening. But at the same time, in um, the middle of July, there'd been a quite disastrous uh, event in eastern Ukraine when a plane was shot down. And <laughs> there were almost 200 Dutch nationals on that plane. And I never write about big topics because the words you use have to be so small and the focus so narrow. But Somehow or other, that uh, event got into the poem. The Walkers. <clears throat> as soon as we had died, we decided to walk home. A white tatter flag marked where each journey began. It was a slow business. So much water to be crossed. So many dirt <clears throat> roads followed. We walked together but alone. You must understand, we can never be passengers anymore. Even the smallest children had to make their own way to their graves through acres and acres of sunflowers somehow no longer pretty. A soldier cradled a cigarette, a teddy bear and his gun. He didn't see us pass, our light was far too thin. We skirted villages and cities, tracked the meanderings of rivers, but beyond it all, the voices of our loved ones called. So we flowed through borders like the wind through railings, and when impassable mountains marked their way, soared above their peaks like flocks of cloud, like shoals of rain. At last, the fields and woods grew weary, and the sea began. You could tell we were home by the way our shadows leaned. We gathered like crane flies in the window light of familiar rooms, grieving for all the things we would never hold again. <coughs> Forgive us for coming back. We didn't travel all this way to break your hearts. We came to ask if you might heal the world. And we'll finish up with something a wee bit cheerier than that. Um, for our anniversary, I gave my wife a blue bowl um, with a silver fox and star inside it. And of course, if you think about the biblical conception of, of heaven as an inverted bowl, which is blue because the heavenly ocean hangs above us and we're looking at it all the time. There's a star mentioned in it, which is actually the planet Venus. An empty bowl for Erica. Love, here's an empty bowl for us, our firmament. We'll fill it with a gloaming of hazelingine, the shout of a fox in a blue field, and that <coughs> brightest indomitable star that was never a star. Remember how it burned a hole through the darkening air. Henceforth, let every suffered night founder like this, so full of itself it's empty threadbare with constellations, seeded with the light of its own undoing. Thanks very much. <laughs>